Hello everybody. My name's Blake Nunn and I play drums. Just wanted to uh, give you guys a quick update on Studio Sitch. So as you can see, I have pulled this rack down off the shelves. I am not a fan of racks, but it actually has come in handy. And I went ahead and <laughs> as you can see, I have uh, done a few upgrades beyond the EAD-10 in the middle. So, oh, let me get my angle straight here. So anyway, we got the uh, we got the EAD in the middle, okay? That's all I was gonna do. But then, the scene started shutting down. The studio started to not book time. The gig started getting canceled. The money flow started to stop, or stopped. Um, but, People don't often think about this, but it is a food chain. Um, if there's no restaurants open, there's no gigs. If there's no gig money, there's no money to go to studio sessions. If there's no studio session money coming in, how do the studios stay afloat and stay going? Um, how do the musicians survive if there's no... Uh, you know, paying gigs and everything is teaching based now, um, which is impossible. That's uh, what I do is my primary focus is teaching. Um, so I guess I'm blessed in that sense is that uh, pre COVID I went in, um, I went into it with a with a good student load that I managed to keep and actually gain some students through it. Uh, kept going in, you know, now wearing masks, having people come either to residential to the home studio here. I have a second kit over there. Well, I have three kits, but I'll take you on a little tour here in a second. But um, so, you know, it just, it became kind of a thought process of, you know, man, I'm praying that this stuff is gonna come back and, uh, you know, the politics and all of that um, improves, the country situation improves. Um, I'm hoping that, you know, the lockdowns don't last endlessly you know for another year and um you know people aren't just absolutely crushed by this so um i always you know try to keep a you know positive outlook and persevere and um continue going through it so i just went ahead and invested in the gear myself so that way i can continue with the passion continue with the playing um there are no studios actually in my immediate area so Maybe I should give you guys a better background shot as I'm talking, huh? So you're not looking at a garage door. <laughs> um, but, you know, it just became apparent that it was like, if I'm gonna, um, you know, keep going with it, it's a labor of love, it really is. And for me, it's uh, it's not about becoming famous or rich or, you know, any of those things. I just want to be a good player and I love having fun playing with my friends and, um, you know, the kiddos I play with and different bands I've been called on to and subbing gigs and different genres and challenging myself and continuously trying to learn um so you know with wanting that i went ahead and invested into so here's my point i know i'm always rambling uh is that i went ahead and invested in the gear because um i don't know how long it's going to last i don't know how precarious the situation can be but i do know that my love of the music is never going to fade or burn out um, I do know that no matter what happens in the world around me, that I got into playing drums because of, you know, wanting to have that kind of respite, that therapeutic, uh, you know, that meditative thing we can go to. Um, so, you know, for me, it's always been kind of that labor of love and, and to get um, my coordination back and stuff like I've expressed in other videos. But, um, you know, now I want to be able to share that. I want to be able to have people come over and rent the space out if they want, um, donate the space. I just had some kids come over today and, and do a recording session. Um, and so now, so now I'm just showing you guys the front. I got a Gibraltar rack. I put the Opti mounts back on to the Yamaha kit. So if people haven't seen these before, they're pretty cool. Um, 
The only thing is, you know, you have to take off the lugs each time to put them on, which means you have to retune each time. And just to get one more rack-mounted tom into the whole mix, um, yeah, I have to use this whole cage because that's the method that the guy chose um, I, that had this kit. This is a kit, an original Pearl Masters uh, 90s edition uh, Maple Custom. And so, you know, there's only a few methods with these because they're meant to be floating shells with no, no hardware attached to the bodies of them. So you either have to mount them to a cymbal stand, you know, with um, mounts like this, uh, with cymbal mounts here. I took, that's what my floor tom was hanging off of before. So you either have to use stuff like that, um, or you have to use a rack, or you have to use snare baskets, or tom baskets. Um, and that's what I was using before was a tom basket because I just like to have a smaller piece, less is more. As I went through, I've already explained that in my last lesson video. Um, so I'll, that's why I'm doing this video because I'm sure it's hilarious now in my very next one to see this monster kit with a cage set up around it. Um, and the fact that I went through all this process and... Um, so here are the mics that I've got. I've got um, Shure KSM-141s. So they're unidirectional and omnidirectional. Um, they're very nice mics. They're highly, highly sensitive. They've got uh, negative 15, you know, flat or negative 25. Um, different curve responses. Like I said, uni or omnidirectional. Depending, all you do is twist this collar and the collar opens and closes side vents. Um, so it either makes them directional, where you know, pointing down, or if you have good room acoustics, then you can make them omni and they'll pick up uh, the whole room. So I've got those, and then I've got, you know, your good trusty old uh, SM57s, some betas. I picked up this PGA Atlas um, side address mic here. Uh, sorry, I'm trying to look upside down as I do this too. There you go, it's this side address here. So this is a condenser mic and got a little shock thing. And it actually is really great for these highs. Um, and just having a kind of dedicated hat mic. Um, and then I've got the EAD picking up the sound from the center of the kit. Then I've got these up here. And then I have the DAW system over here. And then I have two Rode NT5s. Um, the roads I put in the sure cases, <laughs> um, but I, I'm using those as room mics. So basically I have two sets of overheads now guys, and these are the roads. So the roads are really nice cause you can take the capsules off and you can, they just screw right off and you can make these either direction, omnidirectional or unidirectional also. So, um, and they're very sensitive. The road NT5s super sensitive it, it, like the KSMs are but I wasn't expecting that because these are about half uh, you can get a pair of these for the price you can get one of the sure mics for so you know kind of if you think about it that way um, the price point comparison is but KSM is sure you know top line stuff so I wanted to at least for my overheads invest in that good so that way we've got Sound picked up from the center, sound picked up from the overheads, a few uh, individual, you know, panning right and left, doing individual instruments and individual voices of the kit. Um, in addition to being able to isolate it all and only having to run the cables a couple of feet, I mean, it's not organized as of yet. You can see they're just kind of still bundled on the ground. But I only have to run them this couple feet, and then I just got this nice small interface here. Got the dog going, already had some tracks pulled up and run and just have this Behringer going. But man, the it's so fast. The turnaround is so fast and how fast I can create a track, have the files exported, render them, you know, render them as separate tracks, isolate them. And then we just send them over to the other machine that has Pro Tools on it and do the final mixing on that. And then voila, you've got, you know, eight different stereo um, options in addition to the, you know, condensers and cardioid 
and on, you know, just different directions, different polar patterns. Um, and I've just yet to start experimenting with all the stuff. So it's pretty cool, guys. Um, oh, I also picked up this birch, um, this birch uh, pearl SST. Looking for the badge. There it is. Well, upside down, but limited edition SST for 80 bucks. Silver sparkle. Pretty classic. But uh, birch shell and. Um, yeah, I think covered that in a video before too. Anyway, so here we are from this side of the kit. Got everything. Man, working with racks is kind of a pain in the butt, guys. I'm not a fan of racks. <laughs> it's no secret with my friends. <laughs> but um, I'm really not a huge fan of racks, guys. If I can avoid a rack at all costs, I will. But because I got this kit on a trade, um, it, it is what it is. And that's why you immediately saw me break it down and put one tom in a snare basket. So that way I can easily gig with it, take it places um, and all that. But now with the situation we're in back to you know, my previous point, um, it's gonna be sitting parked here for a bit. So might as well pull out you know, the full nine yards and get this, the steel tubing going, the optimounts mounts out, tune them all up, more symbols. Oh, and another really crazy cool thing is that the symbol mounts that he got with this, I'm not sure if people have seen these before, but the whole st symbol stand moves with the symbol. So not only does your symbol flex, you know, like it should, but the stand will move in a full, like look at how my symbol's sitting, and then it flops back to position. So, you know, it has a little mechanical, I mean, obviously your, your symbol's not gonna go flying that far when you, unless you're really crashing, then you're, you're probably gonna break a symbol if you're hitting symbols that hard. Uh, but I, that's, that's a cool kind of thing, you know, just to have this spring-loaded tension. I took it off of this one because what I, what I saw was with heavier symbols, it created a rattle effect, like having a sizzle on where like, it created that, but it was a it was a mechanical noise of the spring, and it's just because I, I put a ride symbol, you know, a heavier um, ride symbol up top, that it does that because these are just meant for crash symbols. Um, so you can see, you know, I, I'm using a ride stand down here, and then it just has this one wing that swings back and forth for the floor tom, um, and we're cooking with gas, boys. We're cooking with gas. <laughs> All right, guys. Love you. Wanted to show you the studio. Hopefully share some more joy. And um, I already got some kiddos in here today. And boy, we created some cool stuff. It was a lot of fun. So uh, happy drumming, guys. And uh, no playing in this video because it's already long and I have a terrible problem with rambling. Love you guys. Thanks for checking it out. Happy drumming. Bye.